Welcome to the last GCN Tech Show of 2021. It's myself and Manon this week because Alex is getting married. He is, and you're flower girl, aren't you? I'm giving him away. Anyway, coming up this week, we've got all the usual bangers. New pro kit, new upgrades from Commute, a new bike, and our main talking point. Yeah, which is a review of the biggest tech stories that have happened throughout 2021. There's some good ones that you might have forgotten about. Um, and we've also got Bike Vault, Bike of the Year. A very special Bike Vault, I can't wait. Well, we better hurry up and get on because we need to get to the wedding. First up, we've got the result of the poll that we did two weeks ago which was on wireless brakes and would you want them on your bike if they had built-in fail safes now it would appear that most people don't really <laughs> yeah 60 percent of the audience were like nope um they whereas only 24 percent said yeah no cables proper cool and simple what would you go for mm, yeah i'd go for it you, wireless yeah, brakes yeah i'd give it a go why not if it a lot works. of cars a lot of cars have brake by wire now so yeah. it's a feature isn't it Cool. Anyway, on to our main talking point. As 2021 draws to a close, we're going to take a look at some of the biggest tech stories of the year, starting with the classified rear hub. Yeah, we did a first look video on this back in March. Uh, Cy presented it and, well, it's amassed over a million views. Yeah. It really did get the bike world talking. Uh, if you've not seen that video, by all means go and check it out if you want more information. But a brief synopsis of the system is that it is a rear hub that features gears internal in it, which removes the need for having a front derailleur. It is a great idea, and hopefully we will see it on more bikes in 2022, because I think it is a total game changer. Now, our next point, global bike shortage. Yes, for, for many, 2021 was a year of the global bike shortage, where they struggled to get hold of bikes, components, equipment, and well, it wasn't just normal people pro it was, teams it was well. pro yeah. teams as well you know having to ration out their group sets this was a knock-on effect of the covid19 pandemic which delayed manufacturing and just delayed supply chains as well from everything in the bike industry and it's something that was also compounded by a huge increase in demand for bikes and equipment as people took to cycling. Yeah, everyone loved cycling in the pandemic, didn't they? So in August, we did make a video all about the bike shortage and components and what was causing it. So if you do want to go check that out, it's over on the channel. But trust me, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, because, well, several companies, including Shimano, uh, massively upping their production. They're building new sites. So hopefully in 2022, we should start to see a, a sort of return to normality and availability of bikes. We have bikes coming out of years. Yeah, and I think the other thing is it's incredibly positive that so many people did start cycling and discover cycling in the pandemic. I really hope that a lot of these people, and some of them will be watching now, continue to, to ride and really enjoy cycling. We might be biased, but cycling is pretty, it's pretty cool. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Isn't it? yeah. We do like it quite a lot, some more than others. Moving on to June, and we reported on 3T and their announcement that they were bringing carbon bike manufacturing from East Asia back into Italy. Yeah, this was big news as it was intriguing how a bike carbon bike brand could remain competitive by doing this. But Labour is the biggest overhead that carbon bike brands see. So that's why a lot of them do move to where Labour is a little bit cheaper. Yeah, however, 3T was planning to use cutting edge tech, automation and robots to knit its carbon frames yeah so using techniques known as filament winding which is like basically robots knitting carbon and resin transfer molding um, they've been able to well bring this manufacturing back into Italy these are manufacturing techniques that existed before they used in a number of other industries not just the bike industry and notably by time as well in the production of their frames but 3T you know, had some really interesting sort of tweaks and modifications to the process to help refine it more and sort of improve things and further automate it. Um, and we were really intrigued about how they were doing this. So we actually well, paid them a visit and I found it absolutely fascinating. Do you meet the robots? I did, especially when it's like the, the contrast of how you can make a frame in this way and the advantages of it versus the traditional technique, which we'd seen before when we visited the Look Factory. I, I, yeah, I was nerding out all over the place on this. I you loved that. Yeah. Next up, without a doubt, one of the biggest tech stories of the year was the launch of the new semi-wireless 12-speed Shimano Durace and Altegra. Yes, and they're going to be available in rim and disc versions, but DI2 
only. So is this signaling an end of mechanical group sets, a future where we have no mechanical group sets anymore? Well, maybe, but um, I think it's a long, long, long way off. A few good off. years away. More than, I think more than that, I think it would be ages. How many years? Give me a number. 30. 30? Yeah, I guess, maybe. Yeah. Anyhow, on to the Olympics because, well, 2021 was the year of the postponed 2020 Tokyo Games and it was a rich vein of bike tech. Yep, this resulted in a load of brilliant tech stories, including the outrageous Hope Lotus Team GB bike. Now, there were a lot of armchair experts sitting at home slating the bike because they didn't defend their team suit titles. Yeah, but they thought it was rubbish. They spoke too soon. The Hope Lotus bike still came out on top on the medal tables. It did. It did, yeah. like as, as the games progressed. Another interesting thing that popped out from the track, the Australian Team Pursuit bar snappage. Remember that? I remember that. Yeah. So the Australian Team Pursuit squad, they were using some 3D printed titanium bars and extensions on their track bikes. And then, unfortunately, one of the riders it snapped. I remember watching that and, it ha and the crash happened and I spent about 10 minutes trying to, well I think everybody did, trying to work out what actually happened and then his bars were just snapped off. Imagine that. Team Sue, Olympic Games race and your bars snap. So the result of the crash was Man 4, so the last rider in line, his, his base bar snapped. This was a, a 3D printed titanium base bar made by a company called Bastion and well it had a huge bearing on the result of the team pursuit because Australia were one of the favourites for gold in that event. They still came away with bronze, but it definitely upset things. I mean, can you imagine crashing at 60 kilometres an hour? At least it was man four and it wasn't man yeah, two and taken out the, the whole other the team. team yeah. yeah, well, that wasn't all that happened at the Olympics. The men's and women's road races were both absolutely spectacular. Yeah. I love and them both. One thing from that is the winner in the men's race, Richard Carapaz, uh, was actually given a bronze bike. Well, apparently that's apparently it was meant to be gold, but everybody thinks it's bronze. I mean, it does look a bit bronze. It does look a bit yeah, bronze. and that's yeah. when the Pinarello F came out. Yeah, well, well. It, was a, yeah, it is a spectacular looking bike. I mean, I wouldn't say no to that. No, I wouldn't. My favourite tech story from the Olympics, though, is this tweet from a friend of the channel, Dr. Xavier Disley, who calculated that the difference between, well, the 4.3 second difference between second and fourth place in the men's Olympic time trial was worth just 1.2 watts. If ever that is an advert for the, the importance of marginal gains and aerodynamics. Yeah. It's that, isn't it? That is heartbreaking. I, would, I wouldn't even want to know. Yeah, coming fourth and knowing that just to come second and get silver, yeah. you 1.2 watts. Or even less than that to get the bronze. Oh, fourth. Oh, worst place in the Olympics. Anyway. But maybe, maybe, maybe they did just try so hard, they just didn't have that extra 1.2 watts in them. I know, but I think you're always going to think afterwards, oh, what I could have found a watt. Yeah, what if I didn't move my head or... Yeah. 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 Oh, painful. 2021 was the year that tubular tyres died. Oh. Yeah, Paris Bay was won on tubeless. Sonny Cabrelli rode the Continental GP5000 tubeless on his Merida Reacto. And also Alaphilippe, when he won the World Championships, he rode S Works turbo cotton clinchers with latex inner tubes. Good point. He did. And well, most of the, the well, most of the bike races that were won by professionals in 2021 were won still on tubular tires. These results are really significant. So firstly, in the case of Alaphilippe, the world's course, it was really, really hilly. And despite, you know, having a heavier setup than a tubular setup by having clinchers with latex tubes, that setup was actually well, it will have been faster even when going uphill because the rolling resistance gains you get from the clinch setup are just so significant. Mm, and also Cabrelli, like, he did so well not to puncture. I don't know how he didn't puncture when all of his rivals did. Yeah, that was a big advantage there from using tubeless when many of them would have been on tubulars. But, well, in good fact actually, Cabrelli did puncture. Um, yeah. But yeah, this is incredible. So he crossed the line of the Roubaix Velodrome. And then while doing his victory lap of the Roubaix Velodrome, he punctured. And then when he rolled up to, to finish the race, it was flat. Oh, that is that is so lucky. I know, it's incredible. Imagine it? if it was just one lap before. Yeah, amazing. Race over. Yeah. 
So let us know in the comment section what your favorite bit of tech was from 2021 and just what you're looking forward to in 2022. We're gonna move on to hot tech now. Hot and spicy tech. Starting with Wout van Aert Cervelo that he used to win at Mont Ventoux in the, in the Tour de France. Do you remember that stage? Yes. Pretty good. Well, you can, you can buy it. You can buy his bike? Bet that's expensive. Let's have, let's have a look. Well, actually, uh, by the time this show goes out, the auction will have ended. Someone will own that bike. Yeah, uh, but it's, it's currently sitting on about 13 grand for Van Aert's bike. So, wow, it's already quite expensive and it's used. So. It is his, his bike though. Yeah, <laughs> there's other bikes on there as well. If you don't fancy Van Aert's bike or if it's the wrong size, there's, um, well, some of the other Jumbo Visma riders' bikes is available too, including a bike that Roglic uh, had at the, at the Vuelta as well, which he won, um, which is, yeah, pretty cool. But they are used bikes. I know, but they're used bikes. You get a new bikes. one for that price. I know, but it's something about having a pro's bike, isn't it? Mm. Well, if you are one of the people that ends up buying one of these Jumbo Visma bikes, let us know in the comments and, well, submit it in the bike vault. Yeah, let us know. Anyway, moving on, and now it's that time of the year where the teams start to release their new kit. And this is going to be Movistar's kit for the 2022 season. Check it out. Both the men's and women's teams will ride in this kit. And the kit is produced by La Passione, replacing their kit manufacturer, Ali, from last year. And I'm a big fan. What do you yeah, think, Ollie? I think it looks cool. I Very think, classy. Uh, yeah. Well, the reason why we've picked this one out is amongst all the kits we've seen so far, I think this one's actually the one I like the best. I think that looks good, yeah. Contemporary. Let us know what you think of it. Next, Rafa has just brought out a coffee machine. Oh. Um, so they, they haven't actually made the coffee machine. It's a rocket espresso machine, which if you're unfamiliar, is a rather fancy pants uh, type of coffee machine that you can get, very high end. But this one's Rafa branded. Mm, and makes it even more fancy. They're, yeah, they're making only a hundred of them. And if you want one, it's yours for 2,735 pounds, which is a lot of money, but- It is. If they're, and you're only, you can only get it if you're a, a member of the Rafa Club. Oh, can't go. But if they're jerseys or anything to go by, I reckon it's worth buying one and then sticking it on eBay a week later because it'll be worth twice as much. Nice That's little tip for Molly there. Yeah. <laughs> Next up, Adidas have a brand. Oh, Adidas, not Adidas. Nike, Nike. Anyway. Proceed. They have <laughs> a brand new indoor cycling shoe. And can you guess what it's called? Samba. That's an Adidas shoe. Oh, no, it's called the Indoor Cycling Shoe. Very wow. creative. And they actually have two other cycling shoes and guess what they're called? What? The Gravel Cycling Shoe, the Road Cycling Shoe. It's like they gave so, up when they were naming these. <laughs> just simple, straight to the point. You don't need any fancy silly, pants it? names. Anyway, um, apart from that, the shoe is actually quite good. It's made from 50% recycled material. It's got a nice Velcro strap to get it you know, easy on and off access. And it's got one of those little loopholes to mm. help get it on. And it's 110 pounds. The indoor cycling shoe market, clearly it's big, isn't it? It's, yeah. Yeah, it's like the Peloton crowd, I think. Definitely, I think, yeah. I don't know why an indoor cycling shoe is necessary. What's the difference between indoor and outdoor? Because you only ride indoors. Yeah, but why can't you use your outdoors indoors? Because you only ride indoors. But what if you want to ride outdoors? You don't because you've got a Peloton bike and you only ride indoors. Take the Peloton outside. You can't. <laughs> but anyway, less people are getting Pelotons because if you get a Peloton, they think you're going to have a heart attack because they watch Sex in the City. But that's another story. Anyway. <laughs> it's now time for screw riding upgrades by upgrades. And let's take a look at last week's results, shall we? Yes. So what we, well, it's not last week's results. It's two, two weeks. weeks ago. Two um, weeks, sorry. And the winner gets a GCN water bottle, the ultimate prize, or bidon if you're French, or pretentious. So, what are the results from two weeks ago, Manon? We well, had Patrick JH's bikepacking gravel conversion. Up against CJ's one by 56 tooth cannon tail cad, and a very clear winner. With 84% yeah. is CJ's one by 56 tooth cannon tail cad. Yeah, well done CJ. CJ actually told us about this bike in a tech clinic. Oh, really? Where he was asking about putting a, a one by 56 tooth chainring on there, and we we were sort of like, well, good luck. I mean, you you backing yourself there if you think you can ride one by 56. Well, he's done it. 
He's, that's so the a bike big... looks great, and also you've got a gold chain on it and deep wheels. And I think the I think the voting audience in the app, GCN Tech Squad, I think they're a fickle bunch. But the, the key to their heart is deep wheels, a gold chain, and a massive chain ring. Just ticking up, ticking all the boxes. <laughs> um, yeah, fair play. We're not going to have um, any submissions this week, but rest assured, in the new year, we'll be back. So You're keep your, better. Yeah, keep your submissions coming in the GCN app, and um, well, we'll be we'll be giving out some water bottles and beadons. I wonder how many we give out in the whole year. Wait, how many weeks are there in a year? Well, we've given a few Brucey bonuses out as well. What's been the bonuses? Like sometimes we've given out two. Oh, I remember I, we signed one once. Mm. It's now time for the Bike Vault. That's right, where you submit pictures of your bikes in the GCN app, and then we judge them to be nice or super nice, but you can vote on them at home yourself. And it's the last one of the year, so we're doing Bike Vault Bike of the Year. It is a very special edition. We're going to have a roundup of the most super nice bikes on the GCN app. These are officially the top 10 best bikes in the world. As, because it's official, because they've been voted yeah. for by all you guys. Yeah, Thousands that's true. of votes have been cast, and these are the bikes that people think look the best. Yeah. So, without further ado, there's going to be a lot of let's bell crack ring in. in to the first one. At number 10, Velo Movement submitted his Bianchi Ultra XR4. What do you make of that? I mean, it is very nice. Superb, isn't it? He's not in biggie smalls. Okay. Yeah. How did this make it into the top 10? Because it's not even in Biggie Smalls. I know, but people, but it's on a beautiful beach setting. It's that yeah. Celeste green, fantastic campan wheels. It's just... It is It's just a beauty, nice. isn't it? I mean, I, I ring that bell. <laughs> Next up. Colnago C64 Frozen Silver 52S. By, by MB Foxy Soxy. Oh, I like this a lot. Yeah. Again. It looks like a time trialist. Again. There in his picture as well. Huh? Um, oh, on the t- Foxy Soxy. Oh, it looks pretty arrow. What... It's, I mean, it's it's next to his bed. It looks like it was a very romantic scene. <laughs> it's a very. What did he do with his bike in bed? It's it's. A, I mean, I wouldn't take a picture of my bike in that location, but I think it is a super nice. That is very. I mean, just the I mean, paint job on the bike. Yeah, I could look at that all day. That is. To be fair, I wouldn't want to take that bike outside. It's too nice. Um, I mean, in the bedroom. Yeah. Ring that bell, man. Oh, yeah. Who have we got next? Next up, we have John Walker 23 with a Cannondale Super 6 high mod disc. Gold chain. That <laughs> <laughs> <I> nearly went. <laughs> oh, tan sidewalls. Gold yeah. chain. We are in Biggie, officially in Biggie Smalls. To be fair, I just love stealth. Yeah. On a bike. Yeah. Just stealth mode, a I, nice bit of tan sidewalls, gold chain. What more do you need? I like to see the nicely trimmed shrubbery in the background. It's well maintained bush. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that is a That's super nice. That's not what I meant. That's not what I meant. That's not what I meant. It you is said super it now, nice. Ollie. Who have we it got is. next? <laughs> We've got Jason Richardson 1 with a beautiful Ooh. S-Works SL7 tarmac. Come, I mean, that's easy. That is, that takes all the boxes and a nice clean background. I would background. say he does require some Ron Seal on his shed. That wood looks like it's going. Why are you like so obsessed going, with the background? And that grass looks like fake grass. There's nothing wrong with fake grass. Okay, give it a super nice. Super nice in that AstroTurf. Moddy Riffs 31. It's another Cannondale Super 6 oh, Evo. Oh, it's like a Cannondale, don't they? Ooh, that is a... And it looks like there's a lot of filtering going on on this. There's a lot of filters. No, there's not. It's a very... It looks like it's been Photoshopped, but I do like it. It looks great. It does look very nice. I quite like the um, handlebar tape. Different tan sidewalls. And it's an oversized pulley wheel, a black chain. And we've got an oval chain ring. Oval chain ring. It's just nice, isn't it? It it's is. It's very, very fancy. Um, I, oh, that's easy, that one. That's it. Super nice. In at number five, it's Oliver Dot Bridgewood. You can't announce yourself. Why not? I'm in at number five. Yeah, but that's. I can't a bit, argue with this. Uh, okay. The audience have voted. They voted it the fifth best bike vault bike of the year. But it's a picture of Alex with your bike. Yeah. Did, did Alex do the little modifications like the discs? Yeah, and he the did. Chain I took a picture and... of it. <laughs> 
You took credit for this. Something, something not quite right here, but okay, fair enough. Well, yeah, Alex modified uh, this Pinarello Dogma Alex looks very happy about this. He did, so that he could do a, a, an hour record on rollers. There you go. So he made it really aero and put a massive 60 tooth chain ring on it. Looks pretty cool though, doesn't it? Fake plant in the background. Yep, there you go. Um, who's next? Not ringing the bell oh, yeah, for that yeah, one. No, you are. Who's next? Next up, we have... In at number four. Mark Tricklebank. Mark Dot Tricklebank. Tricklebank. System 6. Another Cannondale. Cannondale. Cannondales and Specialized. Very popular, very popular in this list. Very popular, aren't they? Um, and this thing is very nicely lined up in this picture. Yes. Oh. I like, he's gone 23 mil tyre at the front, 28 at the back. Intriguing. This is super nice, isn't it? It's easy. It is a very he's super made nice. Our, made our life easy. He's obeying the rules. <laughs> Very good. In at number three, another Cannondale System 6 from Dave221, uh, the 221st Dave on the GC. Oh, I, I, I'm enjoying this. So nice little pops of purple on there. I'll tell you what though, what would make it even better, it's beautiful, but if, if you'd used a shadow stand the stick instead does of that stand stick. out. Yeah. There you go. Anyway. I mean, it's still a very nice looking it's bike. It's super nice, isn't it? It is. It's a I do like that that black and then the team paint job. It's it's really cool. Rougher. Right. Number two. Oh. Bobby, Bobby stars, stars with his Trek it's not, Madone. It's not a Cannondale. No. Bobby Stars with his Trek Madone. That is that is sexy. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with this this wood in the background. That he wood also wouldn't... needs to uh well maybe he spent a bit too much money on his bike and didn't save any left for a leaf blower. Anyhow, a big moment, we move on to the most super nice bike of the year. The Bike Vault Bike of the Year, as voted for by everyone that uses the app. Drum roll. You ready? And it's this from Robert Gessing, his Cervelo S5. Robert Gessing of Yumbo Visma a submitted his bike. A cyclist. Yeah, um, and everyone loved it. Though you're all wrong. You there's do a, not love there's it. A lot, I don't. There's a lot of infractions here. One bottle, look, it's either two bottles, got to be matching, or no bottles. Not to one or the other. I don't like that there's, it's not in Biggie Smalls. It's um, at a jaunty angle and, and it's just, it, it, the bike is underexposed against that wall. The sun's in the wrong orientation. So it's, it's you can't pick out the detail. I'm, I'm sorry, but it's it's a nice. Have you had a fight with Robert? It's a nice. You don't like Robert, I do expect you? more from someone of Robert's stature. Well, there's always next year. Yeah. Robert, don't disappoint us in 2022. You please. better not ring that bell. I'm not ringing the bell. Good. So there we have it, the last GCN Tech Show of 2021. Yeah, hope Very you've sure. enjoyed it. Um, by the way, Alex did a great video where he tried to break the hour record on an e-bike that was de-restricted and seeing if he could do it with just one battery um, at Newport Velodrome. Mm. So if you've not oh, seen that yet, one. check that out because um, I thought I really enjoyed it. But we better hot foot it now yeah. because we've got to get to Alex's wedding. Get the flower girl ready. We're going to be late. Come on, let's go. You should go first. There's a limo waiting. Yeah. Ow. See ya. Have you got the bouquet? <laughs>